Hey guys, Joshua Peterson here, Peterson Electric, try to do one good video for you here a week. I'm going to talk really fast because I'm getting too many complaints about finding second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth videos, and I'm going to shorten up the videos and do less talking on the job. Um, once I go to these jobs, I can never get back out, and you ask me all the time if I'm getting paid to do this. No, these are total bid jobs, so if I talk, it's a waste of my time and it's free to you. And I download this to my SEO guy and I pay him to actually upload it and put it in for linking our um, webmasting my accounts. But the point of the matter is, is that these videos, I'm going to make them a little bit shorter. Um, and it is right now, February uh, 2020, right around Valentine's. This video is going to be about TC cable. Uh, it's number two lumen or number two copper for conductor. Um, and it's going to be feeding a sub panel off of the garage. I did not want to come off the sub pan the second panel in the in the mechanical room, so I fed it, uh, if you will, like a V straight out from the main service. Now they would like to get this upgraded. This is an inch and a quarter mast. It is built in the 50s. This is a number four aluminum. I bet you, it's only good for 125 amps based on the utilities here. This cabinet is only good for 125 amps itself. So I decided to come off of here. Now this, when I opened it, was just really all over the place, these feeders. Uh, this is no longer allowed to feed your feeders into this area and go in through here to the house. So if they upgrade, we're going to have to have a direct bore down there and then um, uh, redo this. So anyways, this is going to be a 100 amp main breaker, 125 amp main panel. Can't, up, can't upsize that, of course. Um, but this right here is a number two at copper. So it's probably good up to 100 amp, but only had an 80 amp breaker on me. But that's all they need in that garage. They could go up to 100. But right here, this is an FMC liquid flex metallic, good for sunlight and cold outside. And it fits in this tray cable, TC cable. Love this stuff. But it's all copper, no aluminum. Okay, so anytime you get over a number six gauge, you have to go to this stuff. And I do advise it, but it's as heavy as an anaconda. Anyway, so here's how that turned out. I used my nice boring Milwaukee to build, bore our two and a half inch hole. Cocked that, ran out the cold water here, ran down the inner system bonding bridge bar. And these were really fun to get in. These two rods here, down the steps to here. I'm sure some of you wise people will ask me, why didn't you go that way? We'll go ahead and show them. The reason why I didn't go that way is because there's a door and another area and it goes out to the front sidewalk. So this was the best way to get away from all that to keep six foot maintaining minimum apart. This house was already redone. It was a fix and flip about a few, five months ago. It finally sold. So we didn't do all this other wiring since for example, NC cable surface mounted on a block wall, I would have done EMT. But again, I didn't do any of that wiring. The original wiring is right in here. We're gonna come in here later and deal with some arc faults and trace the house because they put GFIs on furnaces and just hodgepodge where the breakers went. So we're gonna arc fault as much as we can and try to quad up on some of that. Plus they're putting cutler hammer with Siemens uh, breakers and you're not allowed to do that. Once I came in here with the TC cable, I decided to protect it. It is good and, and it's allowed to be exposed. But in case of physical damage, it's pretty heavy duty stuff, but I'd still, just for how to look into extra safety, I put it in an inch and a half flexible metallic tubing. These are inch and a quarter minis, and it came to here. And once I got into here, I was able to fish that straight back. I'll grab my Milwaukee light. Love this light, you guys. Definitely would suggest this all day long. You can power in and out of this thing. Other of these lights, hang them upside for temp. 4,400 lumens or it's battery operated as well. And then it has a, a dimming process. It's just an awesome light if you like living in crawl spaces like me. Now I did run a separate wire for article 250-130C. I believe is still allowed. We're getting in the 2020 code here. I'll be going to my class next month. I'm excited to sit with all these inspectors and listen in. But here's this ground bar. Again, you're gonna start bitching at me about an inch and a half PVC. This is a two inch PVC and all the conductor fill in the box is too small. I get it, but I didn't pull this, okay? 
but the guy that did the work did a really good job. I know this isn't commercial, this is residential, but how many row mixes can you fit in there? Well, this guy fit two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14. So maybe he's got, you know, I don't know, 20 conductors in there. Oh, how many current current conductors in a conduit? I get it, you should now run four three quarter PVCs or maybe four one inch. But the bottom line is it's never gonna overheat. It's a house, it's not a building. So, but again, I didn't do that work. And then he piped this all the way one inch to that comp, to that panel there and pulled the circuits and then did the back side of the addition. I ran the wire around and through. You can see down there's about a huge gigantic cave and that went all the way back that you can't see 35 foot over that way is where my tc cable went let's go look at that real quick gotta take some stuff with me when i go Pay attention to also the back side of your wall when you put in the sub panel. This has a lot of plumbing in this wall. And I actually saw that little guy up there in the drywall too. And I told the customer when you go to bolt on any kind of cosmetic cabinets, <coughs> be careful because my panel's right through this wall. Okay. Always try to give your customer a heads up on that stuff. Otherwise they're gonna start a fire. So, if you've ever screwed through a bus bar, you get in trouble quick. But this is that TC cable coming in. Let me grab my light. So that guy came in right here. It is a four wire. And when you split it open, all three are black. So you gotta identify what's what and trace it out and label on both sides. I did flip the panel upside down. I didn't make it flush. I put some insulation behind it because that's the bathroom wall. And I did mud because once you put this cable, this panel in, it always cracks it with that cable. So I kind of mudded that over. And then I drilled a six inch hole here and mudded that about four times to slowly get that to go. So you guys said, you know, I wasn't able to mud. I'm getting better, starting to work on it. But here you go right here, guys. This is my electric charger. I wired it at 40 amps because the Nissans are 32 amp, okay? But my wire is going to be rated at a 50 amp. My plug's rated at 50 amp, but my breaker has to be a 40. You do have to be 125% of your 32 amps, but this is assuming you're charging more than three hours. So at 125%, um, you're going to be probably an 8 gauge wire at the, at the max. Anyway, so I mounted that there for them. I don't like this little Nissan offset because it's so tight. I probably should have put the panel higher and all this, you know, a little bit higher, but he didn't care and he's gonna just charge his car right here anyways. This is an old plug existing. I'm still doing some grounding in the house. Here are new plugs right here that we gave them. When I was already down there, I ran another 12.4. A lot of you guys asked me what that is. It's called a 12.2.2. You will not find it at your box store. It is a red, red, white, black, black, white. I ran one of those to the crawl space when I ran this and right below in here is a dedicated circuit just in case you need stuff in the future. Usually 20 amp, 12 gauge is great for that. Right here is my other ones right here for this plug. And then I ran up a garage heater up to a 5KW right here. Breakers with inside of disconnect for both of these items. So, but this still counts as a disconnect, believe it or not. It's a NEMA 1450, whatever. It's a four hour range plug is what we call it. And this right here is my 10 gauge for my 5KW. We're gonna try to find a remote. We set the sub panel, sub panel rate right up to 125 amps. Again, this wire could do 95 to 100 amp, but only had an 80 amp breaker, but that's all they need right now. Um, he probably will do a wood shop in here, but I doubt he's gonna charge his car the, during the time of the wood shop. The heater might be on with the car. That's why we did that. But as you saw at that panel outside, we did 100 amp to that basement. We didn't want to come off that panel, though it was easier for us to do. I do not like doing that. If I have an extra eight spots outside in that main panel, 
We're gonna come right into that. Later, they wanna see if they can get a drag bore, an eight inch hole, and go out to the other corner of the driveway where there's the utilities and see if they can upgrade and get 200 amps. But we gotta call the engineer uh, for Collins Power and see if they'll let us do that. So anyways, uh, yeah, here's all that works. Uh, labeled everything 